Hi scholars, we're gonna talk about visual texture. Visual texture is the way a surface or an object looks like it would feel if it could be touched in real life. So some of the textures I have here are smooth, bumpy, rocky, prickly, furry or hairy, sandy, fluffy and soft, pointy, here's another soft, rough, scratchy and scaly. There's a bunch of examples on here. I'm gonna post both of, both of these on the PowerPoint in case you would like to take a look at them. You'll wanna look at the textures as you're adding texture to your shoe. Um, I can show you how to make a couple of the more difficult ones. You can use crayons to make texture or you can use color pencil. Um, you may also use markers if you have it, but it's a little bit harder to make texture with the markers, but not impossible. So the ones that I've had the hardest time with is prickly. So what you wanna make sure you do, similar to pointy, is every line you make, have it be sharp. Because the minute you start rounding it out, it doesn't look so prickly anymore. It looks more smooth, I guess. Smooth, in order to get a really smooth look, it has to be rounded and also shaded in where there's no variations, meaning if I was to shade it in and it's soft in some areas, I push harder on the pencil in some areas, that looks more rocky. Rocky and bumpy are very similar, so bumpy is a little bit more rounded. It has some, maybe some shading, but it looks like little hills. Rocky is a little more square. So we talked a little bit about how to make a cube shape last week. You can use some of your shading to add some value to the top of the cube. That looks kind of rocky, a little bit more square. Sandy is easy, just making some bumps and then adding a little bit of texture on top. Furry and hairy exactly what it sounds like just making little it almost looks like a feather little furry lines pointy triangle like shapes scratchy could be all sorts of stuff I think scratchy looks kind of like sandy but a little bit more um, straight lines and then I like to add these little almost like little they almost look like a duck footprint like three little lines it's kind of scratchy or pokey if you were to touch that and we talked about scaly before. Um, scalloped lines can often look scaly. I have my lines here. Just so you guys have seen this worksheet before. Our types of lines, our scalloped lines look kind of like scales. You just repeat them behind each other. So that's what we're gonna use today is visual texture to incorporate in our shoe. But before we add any of our texture, we have to have a shoe to add texture to. So what I want you to do is grab a shoe and either a pencil or a colored pencil. Um, you won't wanna trace with a crayon, it's a little bit too thick, and you won't wanna trace with a marker in case you get marker on your shoe. So I would get a regular pencil, a colored pencil, and a shoe, and one piece of paper. The reason we add texture to our artwork is to make it more interesting. There's a whole bunch of textures in the world and it makes our artwork a lot more interesting if we could put some of those textures into it. Okay, so I have my shoe. I am going to do, choose a color scheme before I start. So if you wanted to choose your color scheme with me first, that's great. For this color scheme, it was warm, warm colors on the outside, cool colors on the inside. You could choose primary and secondary colors. You could choose complementary colors, meaning let's say the shoe is all red, the back is all green. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to actually do blue and orange complementary colors, but I'm gonna try and do a monochromatic shoe on the inside. So I'm gonna choose blue. Maybe I'll leave that there so you can see the example. And what you wanna do when you trace your shoe is my shoe's a about the size of the paper, I have big feet. <laughs> I'm going to take my pencil. Now here's the trick, and this is where a lot of people make a mistake. 
the pencil has to stay on the outside of the shoe up and down the whole time. You don't ever wanna tilt your pencil out or in, then you're not gonna get the proper shape of the shoe. So I'm gonna hold down my shoe tight with one hand and I'm gonna hold the pencil with the other one. I'm gonna make sure I don't dip my pencil in or out because it's going to get the true shape of the shoe if I keep it upright, I can go around the laces. You could trace the laces if you want. I'm making sure not to dip my pencil out even as I go around this bump. And I might have to switch hands. You might have to let go at some point. I'm done. I made a little mistake, but that's okay. So right now this doesn't look like much and that's totally fine. You just touch your shoe. So if you wanna take a break, press pause and go wash your hands, it might be a good idea. Um, I chose shoes I haven't worn in a while and I'm gonna wash my hands when I'm done. <laughs> the next step is to add those details of the shoe because you wanna have different designs in your shoe where you can add different textures. So I will post the shoe page on the PowerPoint you can look at some of these shoes, have some really, really cool textures. So this one, I like there's like little triangles coming up from the bottom of the shoe. I might even add some of that to my shoe. There's some really cool triangle-y textures here. This is a shoe that I use to kind of give that same look to mine. You could add different symbols, you could add stripes. I want you to add at least six shapes to your shoe about six. So I'm gonna start by adding just that line at the bottom of my shoe. That's already one. I have one, two shapes. I wanna have at least six. So I'm going to, I think instead of straight laces, I'm going to have little triangles coming out from the top of my shoe. And you're welcome to make your own ideas. You're welcome to borrow some of mine. I now have one, two, three, four, four shapes, five, six shapes. I think we're gonna need more than six. So you go ahead and do what you feel you need to do, but I think I'm gonna need more than six. And at the top of my shoe, I know that there was a line on my shoe that went like this, and wow, I'm creating a whole bunch of shapes because one, two, there's all these shapes in between my shapes. I'm gonna add some shoelaces. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just go ahead and add what you'd like. You can design your own brand of shoe. Your shoes can have flames coming out of them. You can make roller skates, whatever you'd like. I think I'm going to add another stripe here. I know Vans have that extra stripe and it fixed the front of my shoe. And I'm gonna add just a couple of textures through, or a couple of areas where I can add texture through here. Just some lines. Um, add one more line like this. Eh, it's kinda cool. Not bad. All right. The next thing you wanna do is think about your colors before you put texture in. So I am going to make a monochromatic color scheme, which means I have light, light, light blues, medium blues, neutral blues, and then I'm gonna have blues where there's a little bit of shade added to it, or shades, so blacks added to it. Um, so tints are white added to your blue and shades are black added to your blue or whatever color you choose. If you choose a different color scheme, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna look at my textures and I'm gonna pick a texture to start with and I'm actually gonna use light blue to start and I have a light blue color pencil so I can cheat a little bit. I think I'm gonna start with a, hmm, I'm gonna start off with a soft texture for this big part of my shoe in here just cause I don't want it to pop out too much. And I'm gonna make it kind of like striped. So I'm gonna push hard on the pencil, but still making it soft texture throughout the top. I'm gonna push lightly so it gets a really light texture. I'm gonna turn my pencil the other way, push a little bit harder. 
See if I can get like a dark and light stripe going on. And texture does not need to be perfect. That's the whole point of it. I can have some fuzziness coming off the top of my shoe. That's totally fine. I want it to look really fuzzy as if I touch the shoe, it would feel fuzzy. That's what visual texture is. All right. So if you wanna go ahead while I'm adding this texture in and maybe take this time to trace your shoe, that's a perfect time to do that. You could start adding your shapes if you're ready for that step. Kind of start adding texture with me if you're already there. So I chose to do, I'm gonna do all blue on the inside of my shoe. And I have to think about the complementary color to blue and I know it's on the opposite side of the color wheel. So as I'm coloring, you can tell me what is the complementary color to blue or opposite the, on the color wheel. Orange. So my whole background will be orange and you can choose, I chose in the background of my other shoe to do all smooth textures in the background but you can choose to do textures in the background if you want. So this texture, my smooth texture on my shoe is coming out to be a little bit more scratchy than I wanted it to, but that's okay. Still looks like texture and it still looks pretty cool. Coming back to that value of working hard, this is going to take quite a bit of time. So if you work hard, <laughs> you will get it done. All right, we're almost done with this one. I think the next texture I'm going to choose is a sandy texture. I am going to choose a dark blue to do that one. So I chose a sandy texture. I'm going to add a sandy texture in here. Yes, texture can get loud. I know it's sandy, but I like to always add the value in the background just to make sure that it's all shaded in. If you wanted to leave it white, totally fine. The next texture I'm gonna choose is scaly. That one looks really cool. I'm gonna choose this big shape to do scaly. And I'm gonna shade this one really dark. I wanna get some of those really dark blue values and I'm gonna add a little bit of black in my color pencil to try and get the darker values. Again, if you're ready, you can start tracing your shoe. You can do this with me. You don't have to watch and then do, we can do it together. You may have chosen to do your shoe a different color, totally fine. So I'm gonna shade this in pretty dark and then I'm actually going to go over it with black and it's going to look like a little bit of a darker blue, which is what I'm looking for. You can also have a monochromatic color scheme with a different color. It doesn't have to just be blue. I usually always choose blue, I'm not sure why, but you could choose green, red, purple, yellow, orange, any color you'd like. All right, I got that scaly texture going. You can add some black shading too, just keep it a nice dark blue. Ooh, that looks really cool. Maybe add some dark blue in each of these scales. Kind of looks like fish scales. The next one I'm going to do, I'm gonna use my dark blue pencil, but I'm gonna shade it really lightly, is a, hmm. I'm gonna do a prickly texture right here in the back. So I remember everything with prickly texture needs to be really pointy. It's a lot like the pointy texture because it's triangles. It's just kind of looks like a, like a prickly cactus or something. I 
Now, when I'm done doing these prickly things, I can either shade in the prickly things or I can shade in the outside. That's totally up to you. I usually like to shade the outside because then it looks super sharp on the inside. Oops, messed up. That's all right. Mistakes happen. And I'm going to shade in really lightly in the background. Oh, that looks really sharp. Nice sharp texture. All right, and I'm going to choose different textures to fill in the background of my shoe. There are the rest of my shoe, not the background yet, just the shoe. Okay, now that I've filled my shoe with my monochromatic color scheme here, all blue because mono means one, chromatic is color, so one color scheme. Now it's time for me to do the background. I could choose any color I want, really. If I wanted to keep it all monochromatic, I would want to choose blue. But I think I'm going to make it a not mono. It won't end up being a monochromatic drawing because the background will be a different color, but I'm going to do orange, the complementary color to blue. The way that I made this spiral in the background, I'm going to show you how to do this spiral if you want to copy me. If you want to do a, your own background, totally fine. If you wanted to try this one, this is how you do it. I would take the color you're going to write with. You want to make one dot on your paper anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Well, somewhere in the middle-ish. It can be in the middle of your shoe, but you don't want to draw it too dark just in case you can see it. I'm going to do it right here. I think that'll look pretty cool. You want to get some sort of straight edge. So I actually don't have a ruler. I thought that this pencil box would work really well. I'm going to use the sharp edge. You want to line up the sharp edge of whatever you choose. Make sure whatever you choose to draw next to is something that your parents say that that's okay because you don't want to draw on anything. And you want to hold it down tight. Put your pencil where the dot is. I'm going to draw a line. Stop where my shoe is because I want these lines to be behind my shoe. Start again when the shoe is over. So now I have a line going behind my shoe. I'm gonna keep doing this all the way. I'm realizing now that my pencil box is not going to reach all the way, so I'm gonna find, here, I have a card. A card from Easter, this will work. It's got a straight edge. I am going to line that back up with the dot. You might have to move it around a couple times. I'm going to make a line from the dot to the shoe. Stop, I don't wanna draw on my shoe. All the way out. Again, stop, out to the outside. If you wanna put that paper behind so you don't accidentally draw on the table, that's a good idea. A scratch paper, I can find one of those. Here's a scrap paper I've been using, so I can put that underneath so that way I don't get any marks on the table. From the dot, you wanna always start at the dot, that way it looks, oh, it just ends up looking really cool. Hold it down tight. All right, and you can keep going all the way around. I'm gonna try and speed this up. Oops, that's why you gotta hold it down tight. From the dot, off the page. Now I don't need to stop anymore because the shoe is not on this side of the paper. The reason I chose to do complementary colors is because when you put complementary colors together, they stand out. Similar to when you put cool and warm colors, they're opposites. So it really makes whatever you're drawing pop out. So make sure you choose a color scheme that you think looks really interesting. Okay, I'm going through the shoe again. So I have to stop and start again. And my last line, start again. Okay, 
So now I have my, my lines in the background. I am only going to use orange to shade in the background. So I'm gonna start just where I started last time. I'm gonna try and shade really pretty light. It's actually coming out more medium. So I'm gonna get my scratch paper again. I'm obviously I'm coloring on the table. I'm going to shade this one like a medium orange. The way you want to do it is just make it interesting. So you don't want to color them all the same because you've divided them. So that would defeat the purpose. Otherwise you could just color the whole background orange. I'm going to try and have some light orange, some variations of dark orange, some medium orange. So that one's kind of like a medium. I'm going to see if I can get a really light orange over here. All I'm doing is pushing a little bit softer on the color pencil. Again, you can totally do this project in crayon if you don't have color pencils, that's fine. Um, it's, it's whatever you have. You can do it in regular pencil as well. Totally fine. I'm gonna go ahead and do dark value. So choose your color scheme and then go ahead and color in the background of your drawing. However you choose to do it, that's great. I'm gonna fast forward this. You can see the end of my piece. Don't forget to take a picture of your project and upload it to Google Classroom so we can see. All right.